Come on, somebody. But what I want you to get in your spirit is this. There is the other side. Yes. He said, let us go over to the other side of the lake. Yes. Say it with me, the other side. The other side. That's the title of this message tonight, the other side. We only see this side where the storm's at. And you know the Holy Ghost told me one day, he said, Marvin, it would have took them days of slow, smooth sailing, because smooth sailing is often slow. Yes. yes. Row, row, row. Gently <laughs> down the stream. Well, it's but a nightmare. I'm in a dream. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's yeah. just easy rolling. Easy. But it's slow go. Slow go. What the storm does is speed up the process. Amen. And God said in these latter times, like he prophesied Sunday morning, I'm doing some quick things. Amen. And anytime God wants to do a quick work, <laughs> he allows divine interruptions. He allows storms to come down after they're sifted through him. He permits problems. He allows Sister Sandpaper and Brother Bucket Mouths to show up. You know, nobody look around, but you meet them. Come on, somebody, often you meet them on the front row or in the middle or at the altar, and sometimes in the pulpit. You meet them all over the church. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But God allows devils. He permits struggles and strains and stress and all kind of things to, to contest you, to come against you, to fight you. Amen. Why? Because because God said, I'm using it. I'm using the devil. I'm using the mountains. I'm using the storms. Even Psalms 30 verse 7, David said, you've made my mountain stand strong. Amen. Because of your favor. In other words, David said it was the favor of God that allowed us a mountain to stay when he wanted it to go. Somebody shout, my mountain, his favor. Sometimes God's favor is in that He don't allow the mountain to go nowhere. He allows it to stay in your way for a little while longer. Sometimes the storm winds don't stop. They stay contrary to you. They're pushing against you. Hey, remember what you don't know. They're pushing you somewhere. They're propelling you. They're carrying you somewhere. And God, you couldn't get there without Him. And if you could, you sure take you a longer time to get there. Come on, you show me somebody that goes through things and hang, hangs on to God and trust Him. That'll be the person that God catapults quickly into His work. Stormy winds speed up the process. It would have took them longer, somebody say, to get to the other side. To get to the other side. If there hadn't have been a wind. Somebody shout, don't curse the wind. The wind may be your best friend. The storm may be your best friend. The problem may be your best friend. I learn to shout in the presence of my enemies because uh, that's where God anoints my head with oil and my cup overrun. Psalms 23, verses 5. Uh, next time somebody talks about you, don't join in to talk and go back to them. Uh, just lift your hands and say, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. That just means God's anointing me. Uh, when God gets ready to anoint you with more oil, He lets devils show up. Uh, when God's wanting to pour something mightier on you than you've ever had, uh, like with Samson, my God, I feel so much a Holy Ghost. Uh, it's hard for me to talk in English. I'm telling you in 1 Samuel 14, the Bible Judges 14, verses 6, a young lion roared against Samson. But by verse 7, amen, it's 5 to 6, thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. He took that young lion and reared it him. Amen. Tore him up in like a he would a little lamb. Amen. 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 Why? Because the Holy Ghost came out of here. Somebody shout, God lets lions roar. Right before he lets his servants soar. He lets lions growl. And, uh, come on, somebody. Uh, amen. Uh, they amen. And threaten you. Uh, and threaten your life. Threaten your existence. Uh, right before the Holy Ghost comes on you mightier. Uh, oh, in Judges 15, uh, the Philistines, the enemies of God, uh, shouted against Samson. Uh, and when they did, Pastor Ruby, the power of God came on him. Uh, the Holy Ghost came out and pulled him. And they picked up a jawbone and slew all 1,000 of them. Nowhere do you hear about Samson, the Holy Ghost coming on him until an enemy came against him. That's right. When the enemy comes against you, if you'll hold on to God, the power of God 
God like you've never experienced will come on you. When God wants to elevate you to a place in his kingdom power like you've never operated in, he allows lions to roar and enemies to shout. So the next time you hear lion roaring, you want to just get out your dance for a while. Come on, somebody. Next time enemy starts shouting against you, you want to say, all right, Lord, right here, all over my head. Just pour it right there, God. You want to hang your enemies? Amen. man that's talking against you, you want to hand them a $20 bill next time you see them. You want to bake them a okay? cake and say, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Speeding up the process for you. Go ahead. Go ahead, says They that sit in the heavens laugh anyhow. Psalms 2 4. Blessed are they that mourn, they shall laugh. Luke 6 21. So in tears you reap in joy. Psalms 126 5. Look at somebody beside you say, You've wept long enough. Tonight's it's time to laugh. You've wept long enough. Tonight it's time to go. Oh, Papa. Hey, 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 son. My God, I feel it. So, amen. We pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because now my shirt don't like to stay in. It tries to come out. Come on, somebody. Because there's more up here. Pulling it out. Ain't enough down there to keep it in. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Gravity has uh, begun to take his hold. Hey. Amen. But I was coming in and, I, and that, that scripture hit my spirit, Pastor Ruby. And I heard these words thereafter. Seasons change. Seasons change. 
Sorry, Sister Cameraman, woman, lady. Praise God. I just did a Holy Ghost moonwalk, a sunwalk right there right fast. Praise God. I said seasons change. There's a season change in the working. God's going to turn this stuff around. I prophesy. says in this next season that I'm about to cause you to walk into what didn't work in the past will work. God said it was my my calling. It was my anointing on you then. But the timing weren't right. But God said this time it's going to work. said it was nothing more than a recital for the rehearsal. Or the rehearsal for the recital. That's all it was. You may have thought it was a failure. You may have thought it was a big mistake. But God said my plans are still set in course. The season was just wrong. But somebody shout the season is changing. And now it's time. And now what didn't is going to happen. Here's my notes. All one and a half hours of it. Somebody's like, well, I thought you had to ask for singing songs. I can't remember a song that saved my life. I remember scripture about the power of the Holy Ghost, but I can't remember songs. Now I can sing songs I've never heard with these. Figure that out. Sometimes that's amazing. You can go and 
Let God use you and bring victory to everybody else's house. But then when you get back to yours, everything's burned up. This is what David felt like. Here I have, I've set nations free. God through me. I've set captives free. Destroyed enemies for others. And only to get back to my house and everything's being destroyed. He just felt like quitting. God spoke to him in 1 Samuel 30, verse 8. He said, Surely you shall pursue, overtake, and recover all. And in verse 19, he did. When I studied this one day, this thing leaped. See, you don't read the Bible, it reads you. And this leaped off into my spirit. Because some scholars were studying. Chronologically, that means at the same time David was experiencing his worst burnout time. Enemy was destroying his house, his home, his children, his wife. He didn't even feel like trying no more. Chronologically, at the same time he was feeling like this, in 1 Samuel 31, the very next chapter, on the other side of a mountain called Gabola. In verse 4, his worst enemy, Saul, was falling on the edge of his sword, killing him on self. Somebody shouting, David was on this side of the mountain. He felt burned out, used up, felt like he didn't want to even try no more. He just wanted to quit. But when he was feeling his worst on the other side of the mountain, his worst enemy was being defeated. Come on, somebody. Can He's going to work things together that you've not been. 